Dungeons and Dragons includes a wealth of content, including some fantastic ales and lagers. I should know, I've brewed them all. I've been through the entire list of D&D beers and ales and brewed, well, my own rendition of them. With all of these done, I figured now is a perfect opportunity to subjectively rate what I think the best D&D beers are by placing them in a tier list. I'm also going to be really curious what your tier lists for this would be, so I'm going to leave this template in the comments at the end for you to create your own and for me to take a look at. Now let's get right into this, because there are a lot of beers to get through. First up, Baldur's Gate Pale Ale. Now this was an absolutely fantastic beer, first one of the series and it knocked it out of the park. With the Callista hops it gave it that really nice like strawberry note kind of thing going for it, the malt bill was nice and not too overpowering and all in all it was actually an absolutely cracking beer. Would I say it's one of the best I've ever made though? Uh, I'd put it in an A tier, maybe. I feel like, for what it was, and as a Baldur's Gate style, rating it not just in terms of how good it was, but also in terms of how well did it fit the style of a Baldur's Gate pale ale, I think it was definitely in the A tier. Piratey Ale with the Callista hops definitely fits in the theme there, and the beer itself was really delicious to drink. So definitely an A tier. Could have been a little bit better, I think, although speaking about it right now, I can't think of how. Following the Baldur's Gate Pale Ale, what can go next other than the Baldur's Gate Red Ale? Now, the Red Ale was also really nice, and it was also the very first time I tried an Irish Red Ale. And do you know what? I can see what all the fuss is about. And if anybody hasn't tried one yet, you really need to. This ale, absolutely fantastic, phenomenal. Fits a style though, again, I would say probably, yeah. Piratey sort of semi-themed. Yeah, sure, why not with the whole Irish thing going on. And also color-wise, a red ale, I mean, this literally looked beautifully, transparently clear and red. So for me, that is definitely, again, probably a high A tier. Although, saying that, no, I'm gonna go S. It was better than the Pale Ale, at least to my palate. Now go next, the Bellbuck. Bellbuck was a very interesting style. So it's supposed to be this translucently bright green beer that's quite a, on, the, on the heavier side of it, but then also had this really nice sort of mentally aftertaste, or so it was supposed to have. Hearing it sound, hearing, reading this, it sounds wonderful. You're thinking, you know, clear beer, little mentally aftertaste, stronger than perceived. Sounds like, on paper, a brilliant beer. I even managed to get the green coming into it, which I was actually quite happy about with the dye. Only problem, though, is mint and a lager, in my opinion, does not mix too well. Had a weird sort of sweetness from that spearmint, from the peppermint, and it just altogether, in my opinion, did not work. Was it the worst thing I've ever brewed? Not necessarily, but it was definitely not up there. So for that, I think that's probably a seat. Do you know what? I'm being too nice. It was a D tier, realistic. Now, following off the Bellbuck, we had the Bitter Black, which I brewed as a standard sort of American stout. And, I mean, it was okay. It was bitter, and it was black, so I guess from that perspective, that fits the nail on the head and should be an S tier beer. Only real problem with that, though, is it wasn't that great. It was too astringent. And yes, it's in the name of Bitter Black, but it was just way too astringent for my liking. Also, not being a big stout person, or at the time not being a stout person, it just it did not hit the mark. Now, I've had it since, and the astringency has gone down somewhat, but it's still nowhere near, in my opinion, and this is a subjective tasting, to be that high up. Was it worse than a Bellbuck? Not really, so I think it's a middling C tier for the Bitter Black. Now, here we come to something that I think everybody knows my opinions on this. And if there was an E tier, this is exactly where this Bitterroot beer would have gone. Smoked Rauch beer, supposed to have that sort of bitter root, which is a weird tasting root flavor in this beer, and I went with the smoked style to hopefully try and bring this out. Problem is, I really don't like a Rauch beer. It tasted like, well, bacon oil, and that was pretty much it. You're drinking a beer and all you can smell and taste is that beach with smoke. And frankly, that was absolutely revolting. If I could bring an E tier into this, it would be an E tier. Unfortunately, there is no bin to put this in, so I'm gonna have to put it as a D. And in a roundabout way, the next one up with the Belgian table beer is literally, no clickbait, the best beer in the world that I have ever made. Not even just that I have ever made, the best beer that ever has been tasted. To the point where actually this Baldur's Gate Red Ale is gonna get knocked down to an A, because that S tier, that it, it deserves S plus, if I could give it. 
realistically, I'd, I'd have this somewhere about here. Wonderfully complex, spicy rye notes, really light percentage at like 3, 3.4%. You could knock back so many of these without getting absolutely leathered. Really the best beer ever. It was light. And a description of Black Grog Ale, which is something that, you know, is going to be a watered down libation, it makes sense that this absolutely hit it on the head and knocked it out of the park. Following up, we had the Dandal, which was a dark mild recreation. Now, I'd never had a dark mild previously, and I didn't really know what to expect. And it had a weird sort of heavily malted note in comparison to a more bitter. And, you know, that is the whole description of mild to a bitter scale. For me, I, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of this, but I can see why other people would. As far as making a dandar, it had a nutty quality to it, and it, it, you know, it was a dark ale with a nutty quality, which is exactly what I got. It, this dandar, this dark mild, tasted like hazelnuts, like nuts, had such strong nutty qualities that in terms of does this meet the mark, yes it does. Problem is, was it good? For me, I'm sorry. Not really. Next up, we have the Deep Ale, which I made into a German Pils cocktail. And, well, it kind of worked. Cocktail-wise, it was fine. It wasn't the most, ex it wasn't the most extravagant. It wasn't the most fun thing. But, you know, it, wa it, was, it was just very middling. I don't even have many things to say about this other than it was just meh. Now, for the Dragon's Breath beer, a name like that, a Dragon's Breath beer, a sort of nice, bitter, strong, harsh beer, well, the double IPA, the Pliny the Elder clone, definitely added up. In my opinion, the taste was fantastic. It matched that Dragon's Breath character with a champion beer style and a champion beer clone that really worked fantastically. Lovely, harsh, strong hop notes that m married really well with the malt, but it still remained that harsh, strong Dragon's Breath flavor. And to me, that was definitely an A tier beer. Although saying that, it could have had a little bit more hop aroma. I was a little bit sad by how quickly it went away, so actually potentially that's more of a B. Elder Roots Stout again, standard stouts. You can kind of see where I'm going to place this just by the fact that it's an Irish stout. It was nice, sure it was okay, it was fine, but it's not something I drink again. For an Elder Roots Stout, however, I do think it kind of matched the mark there, and so it's difficult for me to rate it too low, so I'm going to put it with pretty much the rest of the dark beers right into the C tier. Following the Elder Roots Stout, we had the weirdest beer that I brewed, or one of the weirdest beers that I brewed, which was the Elminster's Choice, which I made to be a Rogan beer. It was supposed to be. Now, it's a thick beer clouded with yeast, which is exactly what we had. And instead of a smoky aftertaste, because the Rauch beer just did not fit, it definitely had its place. As for how did it fit as the beer choice, it definitely married to style. It was thick, it was clouded with yeast. Instead of the smoky aftertaste, we had that rye, peppery, spicy aftertaste. The problem was, it just, it wasn't something that I would drink myself. So for that, again, kind of a C tier beer. The C tier is really, we're going to start running out of room, I reckon. Following that, we had the Golden Sands Brews Basic. Now that, I absolutely loved. The most basic style of the Golden Sands Brews, a nice basic Bohemian Pilsner base. That came out really nicely. And funnily enough, the following beer after that, the Golden Sands Brews Gold, the New Zealand Pilsner, had more better reception from friends and family that I gave it to. For myself though, the Bohemian Pilsner was absolutely spot on. This Golden Sands Brews Basic. It was light, it was crisp, there was an element of sweetness on the finish, but it wasn't overly sweet, and it was just a really, really banging cold one. So that for me is definitely an A tier beer. If anything, no, screw that, that's an S tier beer. That belongs up there with the belt with the Black Rock Ale. Now again, I did say, so this next one, Golden Sands Bruised Gold, flavoured with nettles. I should have put some cacti in there if I could, since that's true to style. Fortunately, I didn't have any, but this was a really weird style to have like a nice New Zealand Pilsner hoppy beer with nettles that brought the earthiness down. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. So for me, that is definitely an A-tier beer in my eyes, at least. Swiftly moving on to the next one, the Golden Sands Bruised Orange. Blackcurrant Kolsch, flavoured with some orange. I chucked in some mandarin and Bavaria in there to bring out the orange even more. I think there was even like sweet orange peel. There was a lot in there. It was good. It was very good. Unfortunately, I feel like it didn't completely work out as well as I could have hoped. It had a beautiful colour, it looked really nice, it smelt really nice, but it was just lacking somewhat, and I think maybe it just came out just a little bit too dry in the end. 
As far as the gold tans bruise orange though, it, it, it had the whole thing. It had the all shebang. It had the color, it had the flavor, it had the taste, just as a D&D beer would. But for me, it just was not the one. Now, Lauren's Best was an oatmeal stout. That was a surprise. Literally, this was smoother than Barry White. Absolutely fantastic, spot on beer. It was a fine beer, it was okay. The only problem was, again, it was a stout. And it's just a little bit thick and heavy, and it's not really what I like to drink. It's not my kind of drink. Was it okay? Yeah, it was fine. Was it better than a blackcurrant Kolsch? No. Was it on par with a blackcurrant Kolsch? Again, probably not. And unfortunately, you're gonna see exactly where this is heading, back to the C tier with the rest of the relegated stout. Following on, we have the Schwarzbier or the Night Ale. Now this one I really did enjoy. Night Ale, Night Ale, dark in color. I mean, it fit the style. As you can see, after all of these darker beers, thinking, oh great, we're gonna have to do another stout, I'm really glad that I went for a Schwarzbier character instead, because it had that beautiful characteristics from the Pilsners that I really enjoyed, and it coupled with some of that weird, interesting multi qualities from the stouts and the darker beers. So for that, that was definitely a really top beer. Not an S tier, but I think it deserves its place as an A tier beer. I could knock back a fair few. Following up, we have the Old One Eye, which I made as the Orange and Cranberry Saison. Now, that was quite true to style, and it had all of that sort of weird character. Fortunately, it didn't come out as orange and as red coloured as the Old One Eye is supposed to be, so for that, it's going to get dots and points. Taste-wise, though, it was phenomenal. It was high percentage, it had that sort of character to it, but it did not taste it, and so was deceptively strong. Definite B-tier beer, in my opinion. Nice, light, refreshing, funky with some weird sort of Saison qualities, deceptively strong, but it just, it did not hit the mark. It wasn't as good as like a Crispy Pills or even the Red Ale. Mushroom beer, I think, judging by my face and that, you immediately know where this is going to go, which is funny because it's such a contrasting beer. When Alex tried this, she absolutely loved it and thought this was fantastic. For myself, absolutely revolting. But what is interesting is you don't get that sort of mushroom flavor and taste if you can if you can take your head away from it instead you get a wonderful sort of caramelly aroma and flavor to it which really does end up working as long as you can keep your mind off it so the salmon was an interesting style but unfortunately just not for me However, as a style of the salmon, a beer brewed in the Underdark by the Durgar, by the Dark Dwarves and the Deep Dwarves, yeah, that completely fit the bill. If I could judge it based off of style alone, that would go straight into the S tier. Unfortunately, it's also judging by the taste, and so that goes straight in the bin. Now, a few more left. Shadow Dark Ale, the Dunkelweizen, again, very nice. It tasted like sort of chocolatey banana bread really really wonderful and again like a shadow brewed in the shadowdale sort of unwalled farming community beer it definitely hit the mark it was based off of just what's local and what's around and for that i think it definitely deserves its place in a standard b tier now sleeping dragon dark the new england ipa that one is a really annoying one for me because in terms of sleeping dragon dark and how it was supposed to be and keeping it to style it worked as a New England IPA, again, it worked. Unfortunately, I think there was just maybe too much hop, and I think I was maybe just slightly overzealous with the amount of hops that I used, because it ended up just being overly bitter. If I could take out the first hop edition, it would have probably tasted far, far better. But in keeping to the style, I think it definitely worked. It, and as a D&D beer, the Sleeping Dragon Dark definitely deserves its place alongside the Pliny the Elder, the double IPA, in a standard sort of beat here for the Sleeping Dragon Dark. Now the Slow Spell, sour beer to churn your insides and bring them out, again brewed by the Drow and the Durgar, nice cherry sour with that red colour, sort of rem reminiscent of blood, absolutely a really cracking beer. And it also deserves to have its place up there. 
Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too sweet. And realistically, again, in keeping to style, I think the slow spout would be a cracking beer if I made it a little bit less sweet and didn't add as much maltodextrin, if any. It had the body, which made it thick and churning and like the slow spout and the blood of its enemies, but it just missed the mark by being too sweet and not ch stomach churning enough. So for that, it deserved its place as an A tier beer. Now coming up, following that, the spruce beer made by a druid somewhere in the forest. That is absolutely, I'm not even gonna spend too long talking about this because S tier beer, absolutely fantastic. Almost like candy, sweetie-like qualities from the spruce tips, that vitamin C. If you've got scurvy, drink some spruce beer, absolutely chef's kiss, fantastic beer. Swiftly following up with the Suzale, in terms of purple dragon ale, and I was really happy with the color and how it came out, and that was wonderful, came out purple. The purple dragon ale, fantastic. Problem was too many butterfly pea flowers in there. If it had less butterfly pea flower, it probably would have come out really nicely. Unfortunately, it was just too harsh and too astringent. And for that, it docks points. But it's a pretty beer though, just look at that. So I think it definitely at least deserves a C for that. Tanagir Stout, third from the last. Tanagir Stout, foreign stout. Do you know what? Not a bad beer. That actually completely changed my mind of how I see stouts. Because suddenly I realized that if you have a little bit of sweetness and it's not too astringent, you can enjoy the wonderful dark notes of a stout without getting overcrowded by too much going on. Having just the nice sort of sweet elements, it really worked well as an export style stout that gets exported all around the Forgotten Realms as a D&D beer. So for that, it deserves its place. Unfortunately, it's still a stout, so it doesn't manage to make its way into the top spots. Outbeer, Wizard's Quaff, the Outbeer. Now that was, again, a really cracking beer and that one that I'm actually really happy with how it came out because it matched the Wizard's Quaff character really well. Drunk by Wizards, you can see this being ordered in a tavern. Absolutely a beer that gets taken round in the table, like in the whole uh, Dusseldorf, you know, Stanger kind of vibe to it. It matched that and you could see it being drunk. And that was probably one of the best examples of a proper D&D beer that has been made came out wonderful, it was light, it was crisp, you can keep drinking it. In fact, I'm still drinking this because of just how nice it was. And so for that, it deserves its place as an A tier beer. Unfortunately, just not as good as the table beer, the Pilsner, the Spruce beer. And so here we have the final one of the entire D&D list, which was the Sati. And I'm really happy with how this Wormwiz Sati came out, because looking at the comments, it was true to style came out really well. Unfortunately, not necessarily to my taste, but it had the banana elements in there. It had it had the banana elements in there. It had that yeast sort of character and expression, it had the juniper flavor. All of that worked really nicely. Now, it and again, it looked like a muddy beer. I'm not gonna go as to say as it's a low quality beverage because I think that's a little bit harsh on the style, but it definitely fit also the style of the Wormwiz. The problem is, like I said, just not to my taste. So for that, it's going to have to go into a C tier beer because whilst it was bad, it was not as bad as the Rauch beer, it was not as bad as the Bellbuck, and it was not as bad as the Salmon Mushroom beer. And that is the final Dungeons & Dragons beer tier list, at least subjectively from my personal opinion. Now, I'd really be curious to know what your opinion on this beer tier list would be and so definitely do leave a like and subscribe and let me know how yours turns out and share your tier lists with me. Cheers. Thanks for watching.